Hello and welcome to another video where I will be showing you how to capture video output from these bad boys here. And when capturing, I mean actually capturing both MS-DOS and game footage using a modern capturing device like this Evermedia here that I'm using. I'm going to keep the amount of hardware that we need to a minimum, but expect to need a couple of things. The scope of this video is not to capture standard VGA output, as we all know that this is problematic for MS-DOS based resolutions, where most capture devices will only be able to capture VGA screens like the Windows desktop. But the scope of this video is to work with non-VGA outputs like MDA, Hercules, CGA and EGA. So let's start by going over some of the gear that we need, starting with the MCE2 VGA card. Now this little device here has an VGA output connector and more importantly accepts these RGBI signals coming from these old computer systems. And the MCE2 VGA is definitely the star of the show as it allows you to use these old computers, whether it's MDA, Hercules, CGA or EGA, and use them on more modern monitors, whether it's CRT or LCD displays. Now this MCE2 VGA device here is based on the open source work of Felipe Antoniosi. You can see his website here that I will link into the description where it describes the schematics, the bill of materials and how the overall board functions. So make sure to check this out and some of the other stuff that he does. I bought my unit a while back from Serta Shop, which is an online shop based in Belgium here. They offer various packages of the MCE2 VGA device, ranging from the bare bones board to the dollar board, 3D printed enclosures for it, and so on. Now, I knew that the MCE2 VGA wasn't able to uh, produce VGA output that would be accepted by a lot of these VGA capturing devices, but the owner of the web shop requested me to test out this new firmware for the device. I selected the one with the 3D printed enclosure, which is really nice, giving some extra level of protection to the MCE2 VGA. It's really easy to assemble. You just need to add a couple of screws and your MCE2 VGA will be properly enclosed. I will probably do some additional reviews of some of the products that they sell, especially in the retro sound card department, which I'm really anxious to try out. So please stay tuned for that. But back to the MCE2 VGA. We also need to have this 9-pin uh, DSUP cable here, which is a straight-through cable, allowing us to hook up the MCE2 VGA adapter to a old video card. We power the MCE2 VGA using a USB cable. So on the output side, we have the VGA connector here that we can use to hook up a standard VGA monitor using a VGA cable. But what we can also do is we can use one of these VGA splitters here that we can uh, hook up so that we can both view the output on the monitor and redirect the other output to a VGA capturing device. Now the capturing device doesn't have a VGA connector but accepts HDMI so we'll need to convert the VGA signal into an HDMI signal and we can use these types of adapters for this which takes a VGA input and a sound input and outputs everything over HDMI. This also needs to be powered so we need a USB power adapter. And here we have the actual capturing device. In my case, this is an uh, Evermedia LGP Lite, which accepts HDMI as input, hence the need for this little adapter here. And it plugs into the USB port of your computer. To feed the signal into the Evermedia, we need an HDMI cable. And the MCE2 VGA card sits between the old video card, which is attached using this cable, converting the video signal into a VGA compliant signal that can be fed to a monitor or a capturing device. But don't get too excited just yet, because out of the box, the MCE2 VGA is also not able to capture standard MS-DOS output. But there is a firmware update that will allow you to do just that. 
Now you can buy the MCE to VGA device with that specialized capturing firmware already installed. But if you already have an MCE to VGA device, you'll need to flash it yourself. So for that, you need to flash new firmware onto the MCA to VGA using this JTAG uh, programmer. So this USB blaster from WaveShare is capable of programming the FPGA and uploading it with the new firmware. And to do that, we also need some software from Intel called the Quartus Prime Lite Edition, a free software that can be downloaded from the Intel FPGA site. We're going to be picking version 17.1, the Lite Edition for Microsoft Windows, and we'll go ahead and download that. This is a whopping 1.7 gigabyte download, so this can take a while. But as painful as the download was, nothing compares to the actual installation speed of this thing. On my Core i7 laptop, this took over half an hour to install this development suite from Intel. And the fact that we only need one small executable from it makes it extra painful. But once the installation is done, it will prompt to uh, install some USB drivers for the JTAG programmer. We'll go ahead and do that. And now that everything is done, we can prepare the hardware for the firmware flashing. Now the firmware for the MCE to VGA device can be found on GitHub. I'll link it in the description of this video. All you need to do is you need to ensure that you select the correct branch, which is the VGA common res branch. This is the branch that holds the modified firmware that will allow you to take the VGA output of the MCA to VGA device and feed it into the Avermedia capturing device. You can choose to clone this repository or simply download a zip file which will contain everything. So we'll just save that onto our hard drive here, extract it because this is where the actual firmware file will be included. We'll take our MCE2 VGA device, we'll plug in the USB power. Next up, we take the ribbon cable and the USB blaster and attach it to the JTAG header on the MCE2 VGA device goes in like this and then we can attach the USB blaster to our laptop using a USB cable. Now in order to flash the new firmware onto the MCE2 VGA device we need to load up the programmer which is part of the Quartus Prime suite. So look that up in your start menu and launch the application. So here we see the Intel Quartus Prime development suite splash screen. And then it will load up into the Qantas Prime programmer application. Now notice below that there is a message pane here. If that is not visible, you need to go into the menu. Make sure that you go into the view menu, utilities windows and select messages. That will enable you to see the debug messages that are coming out during the firmware update process. We need to click on the hardware setup button and make sure that the USB blaster here is set up as the currently selected hardware. And then we can click on add file, navigate to our GitHub uh, repository for the common res branch, go into the folder, select output files and select the JIC file here. So we'll click on open. And as you can see, the programmer has loaded up the file and has presented us with this view here. So we select configure and verify. And we hit the start button to start the firmware update process. You should see some messages passing by in the messages view below. And on your programmer, you should see the green LED flickering as it is uploading the firmware to the device. If all went well, it should end with a 100% successful message here. 
Now, in order to test this new firmware, we need some hardware and software. And I have a fine selection of computers here that will be excellent for the job. We have the IBM personal computer, which has a Hercules monochrome card to play some games. I also have the IBM personal computer XT, which has a CGA card installed, giving us four colors. And finally, I also have the IBM personal computer AT, which has the EGA graphics card installed, boosting up the colors to 16 different colors. As a game, we are going to be using the Cycles International Grand Prix, which runs fine on all of these three computers. And with fine, I'm talking about the graphics support. I'm not talking about the 0.3 frames per second on the IBM PC, but this should be an excellent test bed for the new firmware. And just to show you how the game looks like, here is the Hercules version on the IBM PC on the IBM 5151 monitor. Here we have the CGA version of the screen hooked up to my IBM PC XT on the IBM 5153 monitor. And finally, we have the EGA version of the game running on my IBM PC AT on the IBM 5154 EGA monitor. So it was real fun to have all of these three computers sitting here on my desk, something that doesn't happen all that often. But it's really good to be able to compare the graphic modes both on actual hardware and then see how they fare on the capturing device. So in order to do the capturing, we take our MCE to VGA device. We power it using a USB cable. We take our 9-pin D-sub connector coming from the legacy video card. We plug in our VGA to HDMI adapter on the VGA output of the MCE to VGA device. We take our capturing device, our Evermedia LGP Lite, hook up an HDMI cable on the input and attach it to the VGA converter. So just to recap, we have our old legacy video formats going into the MCE to VGA, outputting VGA, converting to HDMI, feeding that HDMI signal into the Evermedia. And all that's left to do now is hook up the Evermedia onto our capturing PC. And here we have the capturing setup with our Avermedia LGP Lite hooked up to my Windows 7 laptop here. So let's load up the Avermedia software here and start a recording session. Here we see the preview window. And as soon as I start up my IBM PC AT, which is hooked up to this Avermedia via an EGA signal, you will see that the booting of the PC is picked up correctly by the Avermedia. So we see the two megabytes of RAM memory count coming from the IBM PC AT. It also has no issues loading up the MS-DOS prompt. So here I'm doing a directory listing in the MS-DOS prompt, which is very difficult to capture even on VGA devices. So let's load up an application like Check It. And as you can see, it is rendered and captured beautifully. We'll take a look at the actual captured footage uh, at the end of this video for all of the video modes. So let's start an EGA game, the cycles. And as you can see, again, no issues in capturing this footage. So whether it's MDA, Hercules, CGA or EGA, the Avermedia will now capture everything just fine. So now let's take a look at the actual recorded files that we recorded via the Avermedia uh, recorder. So here we have the uh, Hercules version, the IBM 5150 PC. Here we're running Check It just to give you a view on what it looks like to capture an MS-DOS based application. 
Because the image is not stretched, this does produce a rather square image. This only happens on the Hercules video output mode with the new firmware. The CGA and the EGA works fine, but for Hercules-based graphics, there will be some post-processing needed on the captured video just to stretch the image a little bit. Because as you can see on the IBM 5151 monitor, the image is more stretched than what we are capturing here. But I'll discuss more of that in a later video where I'll go into much more detail on resolutions and scan lines and doubling and scaling and all that type of stuff. So next up we have CGA. So we got the IBM PC XT hooked up with its CGA card to the Avermedia recorder. And as you can see here, it's loading up the boot sequence. We do need to uh, adjust the width of the screen, the horizontal position of the screen, and we can use that using the MCE to VGA on board buttons to just align the screen a little bit. So as you can see, I've aligned it a little bit too far to the right. So some pixels have dropped off the screen on the right hand side. But overall, the CGA capturing works perfectly fine. MS-DOS applications are captured beautifully. And also gameplay can be captured without any types of issues. So here we have the CGA version of the cycles running. So again, flawless. So really great that we are able to capture, you know, not only gameplay, but also startup sequences of these old PCs and, and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a really nice addition, the new firmware of the MCE2 VGA device. So here you can see the output of the IBM PC AT using the EGA graphics card. So here I've captured the entire boot process, which renders beautifully. So here we're at the MS-DOS prompt. So let's start an application. Let's take check it. And as you can see, no issues whatsoever. There are some borders obviously on the top and on the bottom, but this is a full screen uh, capture basically. And also the games run really nice in this mode. So let's load up the cycles. And again, no issues to be seen here. Capturing is done flawlessly. The aspect ratio is respected, so this looks just as it would on the actual EGA monitor. So yeah, really happy with this solution for capturing these old non-VGA video formats. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave you with the excellent soundtrack from the cycles blasting from these three PC speakers all at once. We've covered a lot of ground, the gear that is needed, flashing new firmware, hooking everything up to a capturing PC, reviewing the recorded output. So I hope this video was of some use to you guys. I've also written an article about it on my blog that I will link into the description which features some additional detail and screenshots on how everything looks like on these more modern monitors. If you liked it, please consider subscribing, liking this video and sharing it. It would really help out the channel and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye bye.